My name is John Bouye. And I'm Liam McMahon. And we, for our senior photos, are making an e-bike. So our design will take an existing mountain bike and modify it to be a pedal-assisted electric bike. Um, Pedal-assisted bikes are gaining ground in the United States and they are currently available in a wide range of prices along with electric scooters and other such uh, modes of transportation. And the reason why it's gaining ground is because it, ha it is a very large market in Europe currently where e-bike transportation is more convenient than uh, standard automobile or public transport. There are three different designs for a uh, pedal assist bike. The first design is a front hub application. The advantages of front hub is it would distribute the weight evenly over the entire size of the frame of the bike. It's less likely to get a flat tire due to less weight being applied to the front tire. And one of its major disadvantages is that a high torque motor in front can cause a loss in traction and encourage wheel peeling. Um, advantages of a rear hub motor is that higher torque motors have better traction because the majority of the weight, including a person sitting on the bike, is over the rear tire. Um, because of this, it has a smoother acceleration curve. And as you can see, or not see, because the motor is hidden behind the rear brake uh, disc, they are much sleeker and more compact. Um, they are also uh, worse for weight distribution. It means even more weight over the rear tire, which means you're more likely to get a flat. And they are moderately difficult install to install because you have to remove the rear tire, the rear sprocket, the rear chain, all of that to access the axle. The last option is a mid-drive system, where the advantages are the but you are now using the gearing of the bike to power the back wheel. It allow, allows you to be more efficient, have more power, be better at hill climbing. It's also easier to maintain and evenly distributes weight. Yet it often requires more parts and is harder to set up initially. We will be using a mongoose bike, which has front and rear suspension, um, is sitting on 29 inch wheels and it has an aluminum frame to reduce weight. It also has 21 speeds currently at stock, which may be modified depending on available space. The motor we'll be using is a 36 volt, 450 watt electric bike bicycle motor that has built in gear reduction, and the output shaft of the motor is 450 RPM. We'll also be using uh, standard 12 volt batteries that have a capacity of 10 amp hours and they have two positive and negative connectors and they weigh almost seven pounds and we will be using three of these batteries. For a controller we'll be using a controller that can take up to 36 volts and 550 watts. The controller has a cur current limiting fe feature that prevent prevents damage due to overcurrent conditions and also has a feature for under voltage protection feature that prevents over discharge and extended battery life. Um, the different controller connections, uh, there is one for the motor, one for the batteries, for the throttle, battery gauge, charger, brake level switch, brake light and key switch. This controller allows for all these individual components to be powered by the battery pack. For a throttle, we're using a twist throttle with 36 volt power meter. There is a meter indicating that, that the power is on, a green light indicator that in indicates that the battery is full, and a yellow light indicator that in indicates that the battery is low. Uh, we will be using a key style ignition switch. Um, the key is removable in the off position only, like an automobile, and this will prevent or at least discourage theft of the bike. Now, here's a basic design of our build showing that we're going to have the batteries in the rear, the motor mounted underneath the frame, and a back rack to hold the batteries.
Here is an alternate design showing the battery pack in the frame of the bike attached to the motor mount. And this will redistribute the weight in, in the bike to lower and center the center of gravity. Um, we will most likely leave the rack on the back of the bike for convenience purposes and it may also serve as a mud flap. This is a free wheel. A free wheel allows rotation in one direction that also that fixes, that fixes the free wheel so that both the outer diameter and the inner diameter spin at the same RPM. While in the other direction, it it is free to the center is free to rotate individually from the outer diameter. Um, we will be using two free wheels. One will be located on the output shaft of the motor, and one will be located on the main crank shaft behind the main sprocket on the front. And the purpose of these is the output shaft on the motor will make it so that you can pedal without the motor interfering, and the free wheel on the crank sprocket will function so that the motor can spin the gearing without the pedals turning at the same time. The free wheels will be located on the cassette where the pedals are located and on the output shaft of the motor as shown in this image. Here are our references for the research and the sourcing of our parts. And here, here are the GrabCAD files that we use to make the model, 3D model of the bike, including the authors and the URLs for these parts. Thank you for watching our senior project presentation. Thanks. My name is John Bouye. Uh,